From KCBS Radio, I'm Sydney Fishman in for Matt Pittman, and this is Bay Current for Wednesday, March 23rd. Listeners should know that this segment contains material that could be triggering for some people. The Golden Gate Bridge is a towering symbol of San Francisco and a gorgeous reminder of the history of infrastructure in the city. But the glimmering landmark has a grim history and shows the trauma behind suicide and mental health issues in the Bay Area. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, more than 1,800 people have fallen to their death from jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge since its creation, and 21 confirmed suicides happened from the bridge just last year. The Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District approved a suicide deterrent in 2014, but it's taken nearly eight years to become close to finishing. But now, bridge officials expect to finish a $206.7 million barrier by the end of next year to break the fall of any person hoping to jump to their death. The net, which is made up of stainless steel, will be attached to both sides of the bridge. But even though the barrier should be finished soon, there has been a huge amount of obstacles, including political opposition to the barrier and construction delays. And some Bay Area locals are saying the barrier is not visually pleasing. But others, like Dana Whitmer, one of the board members of the Bridge Rail Foundation here in the Bay Area, says this barrier will help bridge the gap between life and death. The idea is that when somebody jumps 20 feet onto steel cables, they will have that time to reflect. They will be seriously or significantly injured. And this is marine grade steel. It's not, it'll flex a little bit, but it won't collapse. And, you know, skin is a little bit more tender than steel. So people will probably get lacerations and potentially broken bones. I know a big concern has been that they will manage to get to the edge and jump again. But normally people, once they have an opportunity to stop and think about what they're doing or what they've done, they kind of take a step back mentally and say, I really didn't want to die. I just want to be out of my pain. But when you jump off the bridge, you have four seconds and before you hit the water. And you don't have time, even if you regret it, the second you let go, you don't have time to do anything. And you're more than likely going to die. Very few people survive that jump. Um, So it's convincing them that they may go somewhere else. You know, if, if the net is in place, they may go somewhere else. But the lethality of another method is so much lower significantly lower. So they would have time to actually think about what they've done. Whitmer has a personal experience with suicide in the Golden Gate Bridge. Her son died from jumping off the bridge in 2007, and she was never able to recover the body. She says that the Golden Gate barrier has become a life goal for her and other families who have dealt with suicide and that their advocacy work has helped secure the barrier's completion. I lost my son, Matthew, in 2007. And I was trying to figure out what was going on, what I could do. Um, We never recovered his body. And so I was looking around on the web and stuff and came across Bridge Rail, uh, emailed them, and immediately got contacted by Dave Hull, who was the president then. And we talked quite a bit. And then he said, would you like to talk to other families? And I did. And two more people called me that evening. So Bridge Rail already had families um, assisting them or at least talking with them when I came on board. Um, In the three months following my son's disappearance, there were three other families and we pretty much became each other's support groups. Some of the big barriers um, was the money, was getting the money. Um, So it was a lot of the myths that surround suicide and that a lot of the board of director members believed is that they would just go somewhere else. And a lot of the public does too. And it was 
uh, educating people about that, that they won't if they have time. So why is the Golden Gate Bridge a symbol for people who are thinking of suicide? And why is it common for people to use the bridge for this purpose? It's very easy to get over that railing. A five-year-old child was able to climb over that railing and fall to her death. It was at her father's request and he followed her. So it is easily done. But a lot of people think or say, you know, it, they want to go out in a glorious way, you know, kind of thumbing their nose at the city. And that's not exactly accurate. They're there because they know it's lethal and, and they will, will die. And the biggest push for the families trying to get this done is we didn't want anyone to have to go through what we did, especially the families who knew they lost somebody, but we didn't get body recovery. But there are still many opponents of the barrier, and they have spoken against it at the Highway and Transportation District's board meetings. Whitmer says that these opposing views are mainly about aesthetics, and that many of the complaints are from bikers, who are worried about preserving the bridge's image from the view of the biking trail. One of the bigger complaints that we ever had was from people who said the aesthetics would be really bad. They didn't want to see a barrier. They were concerned about the net and what that would look like. One of the um, speakers at the Bridge District board meeting was from the Marin Bike Coalition. And it's a big corridor for bicycles going across that bridge. Um, And they didn't want the one fencing that would go up and across, which I understand, but they said it, it, it would block their view. And it really doesn't. I mean, when you're looking out at the bay, if something's there, you look through it, you really wouldn't notice like a chain link fence. They, a lot of people would say, oh, it's just, you know, the families who feel guilty that their child died by suicide. And they just, it's just wasting their money. And I was just trying to find the logical, you know, the reasonable response to the money issue. And, you know, there's, there's really an emotional response to aesthetics because I think my son looked a lot better than their complaint about not having a view. Whitmer says that she is thrilled that the barrier will be completed, but her feelings are bittersweet because mental health advocates have been pushing for this project for a very long time and with little results. The emotions for us is um, we've waited too long for this, you know, the, Highway Patrol tried to get this started back in 1939, and there have been pushes about every decade to get this done. So many of the families are very excited in a sense that it will be done and nobody else will have to deal with this. (sighs) But it's really bittersweet because it wasn't there to keep our children or our loved ones from jumping. The completion of the barrier is set for the end of 2023, if there are no further delays. If you or anyone you know is having thoughts of suicide, text B-A-Y, Bay, to 741741 for free 24-7 confidential crisis support from Crisis Text Line. You should also call the San Francisco Suicide Prevention Crisis Line at 415-781-0500. New episodes of the Bay Current podcast are out every day, and we'd love to be a part of your daily routine. Subscribe to us on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. We're also on YouTube, on the KCBS Radio YouTube page, and there's a link in the show notes. For Matt Pittman and our team at KCBS Radio, I'm Sydney Fishman, and we'll chat with you again tomorrow.